God Man. This book has been written by Swami Sarvanananda of Bindukal. Preface A super reasoning mind accepts that there must be a supreme almighty force behind the existence of the boundless expansive universe with all its wonderful creations. That almighty force is called God. To this one supreme God, many names are substituted by different sects of men of divine knowledge. Their conception of God differs according to their mental evaluation. Evolution. We can put the resulting conception of God like this. Arutperim Jodi Tani Perum Karunai. That is, God is omni gracious infinite effulgence. This can be expanded and explained thus. The omni grace attribute includes omnipotence, omniscience, and omnipresence. With all these attributes, he is eternally working from the innermost of all. This truth is noted by the word infinite. And the last word effulgence represents the self-luminosity of cosmic force filled in in the whole universe. Hence, our God, Arutparam Jodhi Taniparam Karunai, is one supreme being residing in the innermost of all the smallest atoms and biggest stars and in the innermost of all the inanimate and animate living beings. From this point, he is evolving into all forms appearing out in this universe. Therefore, there is nothing but himself everywhere. From this truth, it can be inferred that every one of ourselves is but his expression. Not knowing the inner divine truth of ourselves, we are holding that we are other than that God. With the sensuous mental knowledge, we are thinking that we are all physical bodily beings. When we get the soul knowledge, we profess ourselves to be eternal soul beings. But in all these stages, we are of opinion that we are in separation of God Almighty. The deluded mind of man failed to understand the divine truth. Now the time has come to make us understand the divine reality of ourselves. We acknowledge that the one God of Omni Grace is ruling from all forms made up of by His grace. Therefore, God only has been evolved into every one of ourselves. In order to experience this divine life from the innermost, we have to locate ourselves firstly in the soul autumn kept aglow in the center of our physical head. This soul autumn is our true initial form and the very same is the form of God too. He, out of His infinite grace, with all His attributes, is coming to the realization of man. So, God, man, is only one in fact, but appearing as two for the purpose of divine realization. To this realization, 
man is to transcend to the soul plane and from there he is to live a pure life of divine love or grace with the above intention this little book starts starts with the heading god as the first chapter some of the old and new conceptions of god given out by yogis siddhas gnanis and other great men of higher knowledge are noted down to some extent the present day life is very much disturbed by sensuous flare ups the material sciences and arts have added fuel to fire the olden days serenity has fled away from the world to some unknown regions the idea of god is completely misunderstood by the public their god is tried to be worshiped in many outer forms all their religious instructions codes of conduct rites and rituals are observed without true knowledge in order to clear out all these deluded means the new idea of true god and his omni grace is brought forth for the good of humanity in the second chapter the soul is explained to some degree only a very few people of our country have got some idea of the soul in no other countries the truth of the soul has been brought out to any extent in reality the soul is the one place of exposition of god who is not to be found in any other place with any other surrounding body except our living selves many false conceptions of soul have goaded the mankind to the life of ignorance and dangers a general explanation of soul and god has been given out in the next chapter by this one may clearly make out the truth of soul come god and its exposition in this human bodily life the eternity of the soul god is noted well to be involved in our everyday life we have to live in oneness of him in the fourth chapter our individual egoic spirits disappearance in god is dealt with it is put as no man but god the only god expressing in all men of all times and places is explained here to some degree the indweller is one who is showing out his little bits of grace through every one of us when we understand him in oneness of ourselves we will acknowledge our eternity in this universe from this it is comprehensible that there is no separation of man and god in any circumstances this is put in the fifth chapter the next chapter is life of continuous dream because the divine knowledge is to blossom only in this highly qualified human life till then the mind of man is wandering in pursuit of the sensuous physical bodily life just as a man loses all his actual sense of worldly life in a dreaming state 
he is unaware of his real soul life throughout his physical and material life so this outer bodily life from birth to death is a long continuous dream this life dream will come to an end only at the inner awakening of the self or soul in the next three chapters the real man and his overlasting sorry everlasting life are explained the new life is coming through the grace of god and that life is the permanent one this is a boon to humanity to live forever in the spirit of grace in the 11th chapter the divine dance of bliss is clarified to some extent the conception of nataraja is a great wonder of man's divine imagination in the universe everything is in some great vibration which is the perennial source of the ever changing universe and its evolutions this divine dance is staged in our soul atom where we are coming to perceive it face to face about the truth of this divine dance our tiruvaru prakasa vallala has made a very clear exposition so it has been brought out in the next chapter he not only exposed the divine truth but also he himself obtained the infinite grace of god to live the divine life of grace for ever his path is the only means to reach this goal of deathless life of bliss the others had failed or averted this deathless life because of their ignorance or false notations notions therefore his path of grace was new to this world in order to expose the truth of him and his path of grace some stanzas are taken and explained in few pages in conclusion the man's highest goal the the deathless life of grace in this world is dealt with so this seems a new and impossible one this is the highest reward to be conferred on every one of us by his infinite grace so let us faithfully hope to get this reward from our lord father swami sarvanananda daivu satya gnana kotam dindigal 7 12 1965 daivu